The original plan for this project was to track mental health status in the US, but we decided to build a model to predict stress levels instead because um, there is more supporting data allowing us to make a more accurate prediction. Previous models are more generalized and applicable to everyone, but we wanted to concentrate on stress levels in college students. We use data files from Dartmouth and UVA and compare the two to find correlations between different factors. And our model will give an overall mental health score and stress level and give specific recommendations. So I'm gonna start by talking about uh, some of the UVA data. So this is an example of some of the data we were provided. Looking at specifically sleep data, uh, respondents were asked, how many days a week do you feel well rested? Is it difficult to handle the amount of sleep you get? Do you feel exhausted? And this is an example of what some of the columns look like. Some of the other variables included perceived safety, GPA, alcohol consumption, mood, and exercise habits. Um, to build the Dartmouth model, we looked at 10 different factors for a total of 25 variables. This is some example data for the sleep factor. Um, you can see the survey questions and the response choices on the left and on the right is an example of some of our clean data and you can see the formatted uh, numerical scores for the three categories in the sleep factor. So to deal with the large amount of data, we wanted to utilize machine learning, in particular, multiple linear regression. This took in a large number of explanatory variables, and we were able to output one response variable, in this case, stress. Uh, so before we could do that, there were a couple assumptions we wanted to check. First, we wanted to show that there was a linear relationship between the explanatory variables and the response variable, which is shown by the uh, average residual of zero across all the fitted values. We wanted to see a normal distribution of re the residuals, which is shown here by this nor these normal distributions and the QQ plot. And we also wanted to see an equal variance across all variables, uh, which is shown by the approximately linear red line. And you can see that for the Dartmouth data, we have approximately two uh, linear lines. Um, this corresponds to a sharp decrease in the density of our data, so it's highly likely the assumption is still valid. So now to talk about the actual output of the machine learning. These are the models we built. We started off with a model with all variables included, and from there we we're able to whittle it down to include only the variables that contributed most to a student's stress level. To talk about the UVA model, we saw a, a multiple R squared of 0.3692 with a p-value of less than two, uh, basically zero. This indicates that not only is the model statistically significant, but we are able to identify key factors such as students who had difficulties handling their academics and students um, depending on how much sleep they get during the week. Uh, the final Dartmouth uh, model resulted in an R square valued or in an R square valued of 0.7, indicating a relatively strong correlation um, to stress from the factors displayed. Uh, as you can see, how a student thought they would feel tomorrow, uh, whether or not they felt disorganized, and the amount of time they spent working alone were all the biggest influencers uh, to the stress in our model. So the final step that we wanted to take to bring our project to life was to take our analysis to a more holistic level and create a model that uses more universal factors from the Dartmouth set. So we ran the same machine learning model on a table of all the extracted features from the clean Dartmouth data and we found some surprising results. Um, from our model, we created a linear function using the step model um, with the R-square value of 0.9 and low p-values showing that our model was very strong with reliable coefficients. So they're pretty intuitive coefficients, including sleep time and school deadlines, as you might expect. But there are also some pretty surprising ones that included how, de how dependable you feel as a person and how much you walk and run on the weekends. So, so this is very unique because of how holistic it is. And these interesting factors really show that there are a lot more things that go into stress than what you might think, which is something that hasn't been done before. Um, and we couldn't really find anything online that has used such a, such a holistic approach to create a model predicting stress. Finally, we asked ourselves how we can use this information to create something meaningful. We decided to create an interactive stress predictor with Shiny and R. These are the questions that we asked, and if you scroll down and submit it, you will be able to see how your stress score compares to the normal stress score of the survey participants. This example shows low stress, but if we change it to say less than three hours of sleep, and look at our score again, we can see that our mental health score is a lot lower, which means we have a 
lot higher stress or moderate stress. Suggestions listed below uh, with how to cope with stress.